said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Evangelist David Bybee has been called and anointed by God to fulfill the scripture. Now, let's join Evangelist David Bybee in the worship service at the Crossroads Community Church, Carthage, North Carolina. Welcome all of you joining by television. We welcome you to Crossroads Community Church. We're here to do one thing, and that's to lift up the name of Christ today. We're here to thank God for all of his many blessings. Now, I've got a sermon this morning that God laid on my heart. I hadn't ever thought of it this way before, but uh, we're going to get into it in a few minutes. But it's called Three Prayers, and I'm going to go into that service in a few moments. But first of all, we're just going to praise the name of the Lord. And if you've tuned in for any other reason other than to praise God and to learn more about Jesus Christ, you're in for the wrong reason. And if you came to church for any other reason, congregation, you're here for the wrong reason. We've come here today to try to learn more. Jesus Christ did it all on Calvary. You're saved by grace. And if you're not saved, you're on your way to hell, period. I don't care what the preachers tell you. They can pat you on the back and tell you how good you are and everything else. But if you're not born again, you're going to hell, period. That's the end of it. There's no more conversation about it. That's what the Bible says. And I believe the Word of God. I stand on the Word of God. And I've been proclaiming it for 30-some years. I've got a lot of friends. Those that have gotten saved are my friends, I hope. They don't stab you in the back but once a month. Then I got a lot of enemies because they don't like to hear about me telling people they're going to hell. They don't like me telling them that their sins are of the devil. But I got a sermon today that God gave me. He woke me up early in the morning. Of course, I stay awake most of the time anyway. I was up at five before five o'clock this morning. But the thing about it is, three prayers, three prayers, and you'll never ever guess where these three prayers were found in the Bible. There's three prayers that I'm going to talk to you about. Right now, I want you to put your hands together and make welcome my daughters, Stormy and Carmen, as they sing for God's glory. Hallelujah. 
let me tell you about Jesus. That's what our whole program is about. Jesus is your answer. No matter what your problem is, no matter what your burdens are, Jesus is the answer. We'll turn it over to Jesus. And the thing that we all have to remember today is God's Word is absolute. It's final. I want to talk to you about three prayers. Go to the Bible. If you have your Bibles with you, go into the book of Mark, chapter 5. I preached on Mark chapter 5 many, many times. I've always come at a different angle. God showed me this morning. He said, David, I want you to look closely and read every word. And I thought I had because I've studied the Bible. I preached the Word of God and I've studied the Word of God. But I have found out that when you go back over it, Many, many times I've gone through the Bible. But this time, as I stopped and read it, I want to tell you what happened. I want to tell you a story. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. You need to read the whole chapter of the book of Mark, chapter 5. The Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 5. Jesus had just come across the ocean, the Sea of Galilee. He was tired. Sometimes we get tired. Now, you've got to remember that Jesus was God, but Jesus was in a fleshly body. You cut his finger and he would bleed, and he'd say, ouch. He got hungry. He got thirsty. We found that out because that's when the devil tempted him. And we're going to talk about three prayers, but Jesus, as he came across the ocean, he was tired and he was weary. So he thought he'd lay down and get a little rest on his way over. But the devil knew that he de the devil didn't want him to get to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. The devil had something going on over there. The devil don't want you serving God either because the devil's got plans for you. He controlled your soul. He had control of your destiny. You were on your way to hell before you met Jesus. Now, in the setting, you know what happened. As Jesus was going across the ocean, he was laying down in the ship asleep. The devil said, I'm going to hinder him. I don't want him to get to the other side. So a storm came up. A lot of people think that God controls everything, but God, now listen, God had a reason to allow this to happen. Now God does control all things. He controls Satan. But he allows Satan to do things to try to hinder his people so that he can be reverenced, that he can be glorified. But the enemy, Satan, who was here from the very beginning, controls the principalities and powers of the air. He controls the powers of darkness. He controls the weather because he let a great storm come up at night. He caused a great storm, and the ship was tossing to and fro, and it filled up with water. The disciples came and said, Jesus, Master, we're going to perish. Don't you care? Oh, you little faith. So Jesus had to get up from his sleep, go out, and he stood, and he just rebuked the wind, said, Peace be still. And the winds calmed down. The lightning quit flashing. The thunder quit whirling. The ocean calmed down. Jesus went back to sleep. Jesus knew that he had work to do the next day, and he had needed his rest. Satan had met his match. And you see, this is the way we get when we get tired and weary. Satan always tries to hinder us. He tries to come in when, we, when he knows that God has worked for us.